Hey, it's Derek from CG Shortcuts, and today we're going to do this. We are going to learn how to roll objects along a custom path that you define, and we're going to use dynamics, that way it rolls correctly along the surface, and it doesn't just work with spheres, this also works with other objects like cubes as well. This video was brought to you by CGShortcuts.com, the ultimate online resource for learning CG and motion graphics, where you can find all of our tutorials, in-depth courses, resources, and loads of downloadable project files and CG assets. You can now also become a CG insider and get unlimited access to exclusive members-only content. Plus, you'll be supporting the channel and allowing us to keep making tutorials just like this one. So head over to cgshortcuts.com and start learning today. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. Let's start with the basics. We need to create a spline because we're gonna use that as our path for our object to travel along. So first thing we need to do is create a spline. You can do that by creating a preset shape here, like a helix or something like that. Or if you want, you can use the spline pin, which is what I'm going to use. And when I'm using the spline pin, I like to go into my top view by middle mouse clicking. And then I like to go in here and turn on the magnet tool. And in the settings, I like to make sure that grid and work plane are selected. This is just gonna make it easier for me to make a perfectly straight line. So we can see our cameras here. We want it to go from frame left to right. So let's click down here on this grid point. We can go up here and click here and you can see that just helped create a really nice straight line. Once that's done, you can click the move tool to exit creating the spline pin. We can go back here into our main window here, turn off the snap tool. And you can see that that's created a nice spline for us indicated by this orange line here. Spline created. The next thing we need to do is create our object. We're going to create a sphere and we're going to go ahead and change the segments up to 64. One, to make it a little smoother and two, because we're going to be using dynamics to make our object roll. And it's important when using dynamics to have geometry in your shapes so that things don't start clipping through. It just makes things work better. Now that we have our sphere and our spline, what we need to do is right click our sphere, go to animation tags, and then not align to path, even though we're gonna be using our spline as a path for our sphere to travel, we want align to spline. Make sure to use that one. And here we have a spline path here. We can grab our spline and put it into the spline path. So now it's offset this and it's put our sphere at the start of our spline. Our animation. So at zero, we're going to say keyframe is zero percent. Going to go to the last frame, increase this up to 100 percent, and keyframe that. If you want to, you can actually set this up to like 500 percent, and you can go further, and it will just loop five times in that keyframe. So that's a neat little feature that this has. But we just wanted to do 100 percent. Now when we hit play, we'll see we go from 0 0.0 to 0.1. We want to make sure that our interpolation is set to linear. So what we can do is go real quickly, go to the timeline F curve and see how we have this nice curve and that's making it start off slow, then speed up and then slow back down. And we just want this to be linear. So we're just gonna hit the linear button right there. Now we'll have a constant speed from start to finish, but it still kind of looks like it's slowing down. And the reason for that is, is the way that our spline is interpolated. So we're gonna go here to our spline and see we have intermediate points set to adaptive. So the way this works is it's just kind of, there's only two points in our spline, but it's creating these points in between there that are kind of set to a Bezier type. So what we want is just to change intermediate points to uniform. Now when we hit play, it's going to be a constant speed from start to finish. Having it set to uniform will allow you to control the speed of your object and how it travels along your spline just using the position keyframes. Now that we have that, we can see our sphere is obviously sliding to the ground. So what we need to do is raise our spline up in the Y position the same amount as our sphere radius. So now our sphere is resting perfectly on the ground. And you can see we hit play and that's traveling along nicely on the ground, but it's not rotating. We want it to roll. Now you could go in and calculate with some espresso and stuff how the radius and the circumference of your sphere as it travels the certain distance of your spline so it rotates correctly but we actually don't want to do any math, mainly because I'm a bit of a smooth brain myself. And so if I can do it with dynamics, I just like that a lot better. It's a lot quicker and it makes it a lot easier for a workflow. You can even swap out objects and things and just with a few tweaks, you can get everything working quickly without any math. All we need to do, right click our sphere, go to simulation, rigging body, this little bowling ball icon here. Then we need to make sure we have a floor plane here. Right click that, 
go to simulation, hit collider body. Inside of our bowling ball tab, we see we have collision settings of bounce and friction. Friction is default set to 90%. We want this to be at 100% because we don't want our sphere to slide on our ground at all. We just want it to roll because like it's sticky. So if we go back to the beginning when using dynamics, you always have to go back to frame zero before hitting play to run the simulation. If you go back to frame zero, hit play. Um, it's kind of working but it's not making it all the way to the end at all. And the reason that is, is because we don't have any force behind this. So basically you change that to 100. And now when we hit play, it's gonna go from frame zero and roll all the way to the end and restore our speed and everything exactly how we want. And if you take a look at this, it's rolling. See how it's not even, it's actually rolling along on the ground and we didn't have to do any math. So that's the basics of how this works. And the cool thing is, is this actually works with cubes as well. Let's bring in a cube real quick. So with a cube, we can just grab these things, throw them up onto there, hide our sphere. Now if we hit play on this, you'll see our cube is kind of sliding around and it's not quite the same. All we need to do is go into the collision tab and we can actually increase the friction above 100%. We're gonna say 150%. Now when we hit play, it looks a little funky, but what we want for the result we want is actually just to lower this follow position down to about 15. So now at 15, we're gonna play and we see we get a much nicer rolling cube. But now we say, well, it's too fast. All we need to do is increase your timeline and we can grab this position keyframe and just drag that up to 144. So now it's going to take twice as long to get from point A the point B and you can see it's slightly different. And that's because when using dynamics, speed is a very important factor, especially when it comes to co collisions and friction. So now we might need to go back and increase our follow position back up. Turn that back up to 100. Now when we hit play, and we have a really nice rolling cube. One thing for a cube here that we might need to do is just go in here and just add some segments to this cube. And that might help it just be a little more accurate. It should slide less when it has more segments. So it's just kind of the way dynamics works. It just works better when it has more polygons. So keep that in mind. Also, another way to improve performance of your dynamics is to hit control D, go to your dynamics tab in your project settings and go down to the expert tab and increase your steps per frame to 20 and then your maximum solver iterations per step to 20 and lower your error threshold to two. You can increase these values even more to get more accurate results, but the longer you do, the longer sims can take to run. I find that 20, 20 and 2% are really nice, even balance between speed and performance. So if you're having something that's like clipping through and being kind of awkward, make sure you have geometry there and then make sure that you have enough steps per frame to solve the issue. There's a little bit more tweaking than if you were using calculations, but I'd rather do a little trial and error versus math in my opinion. That's just a better workflow for me. Also, this is just cool because you can sub in other shapes and things here and it will also work as well. Now let's take a look at a spline that goes down, then there's a complete 180 U-turn, goes back up, back down, back up. So we wanna make sure that our spline path is set to uniform intermediate. And then on our ball, we have our dynamic set to follow position of 20 right now. We have our dynamics set to follow position of 20. We hit play, we see we have our ball rolling nicely down there. Now it gets a little wobbly and it kind of slingshots through the turns a little bit here. And sometimes we get this weird unnatural wobble that's just not quite as pretty as I want. So there's a couple things we can do to control this and still make it look nice. Go back to frame zero, go to our sphere and we wanted to actually follow the rotation 20% as well. It's just kind of rolling along the path like it's being dragged or along an invisible line, which is what's happening, versus it actively rolling as if it has a forward front. So here, now when we hit play, you'll see, see how it goes black to white, really nice and clean. And now it's still going black to white, black to white and rolling with that still being kind of the front of the ball facing the right way. We're not getting that weird wobble in between. And I think this just looks a lot neater and nicer.
Now to bring back a little bit more of that organicness to this, all we need to do is go in here to our linear dampening, set that up to 99, and this is gonna help it, our linear and angular dampening set to 99. Raising the dampening is going to fix our slingshot that we kind of had going on around the corners here. So now this is just kind of not slingshotting like it used to. And then in order to add a little bit more of that wobble back into it that looks nice and organic, we're gonna add some drag to this, just 20%. And this acts as a fake resistance along our ball. So now we have speed of our ball, dampening, follow rotation, and drag. And now we have a really nice clean look where it's rolling around, kind of hits this corner, still has a little wobble to it when it comes around because of that drag but it's still orienting the correct way. So it's like kind of a nice, neat roll. And it's not getting wobbly or anything like that. So this looks really clean. Now that you have your dynamic exactly how you want it, you may have noticed you can't really like scrub through cleanly and get it to look right. So all you need to do is click your dynamic tag, go to cache and hit bake all. Make sure that you have include collision data included here. And once that bakes that, it's going to cache that for you so you'll be able to hit play and it won't actually be running the sim it'll just be drawing from that cache and this means that you can actually scrub through your timeline and it'll be nice and clean and it's not having to calculate anything it's going to the, do the exact same thing every time and once you can see that you have something that you like all we need to do to make this a really nice seamless loop is right click this sphere go to bake as alembic that's gonna create a baked animation of this sphere. We can hide our original sphere. And you can see we still have our sphere here that's just gonna roll around nicely. And that is this Alembic. There's no dynamics on this, there's nothing. It's just a baked object animation. So the cool thing about this is, if we go back to frame zero, we see down here in the animation of our Alembic, we have an offset feature. So all we need to do is make a copy of this. Let's move this up to the top. We'll make a copy of this and we'll offset it negative 48 frames. So that's going to shoot a ball 48 frames into the future. And we're going to keep doing that 48, 48, 48 until we fill up our space here that's the length of our timeline. So make a copy of that and keep offsetting it by negative 48 frames. So the next one would be you have negative 48 minus negative 48 and then continue until you get to 432. Now, after having created nine more spheres, we've gotten to the offset of negative 432. We have balls all the way down our path. And we can hit play and we'll see that they're all going very nicely. Now that we have everything filled up and everything is offset by 48 frames, what we can do is go down here to our timeline and set it to 47. You always wanna do one frame less when creating a loop so you don't get a double, a double image of that first and last frame. So now that it's set to 47, all we need to do is hit play and we have a perfect two second loop. So instead of having to render out a really long animation, we only have to do a two second animation and it's a perfect loop that we only had to do one path for, one dynamic for, and it looks like we did a whole lot of work and really we didn't do much at all. Then you just dress that up with some material and some lights and you have a really nice looking loop. It's very satisfying. So without any math, we were able to create a really nice loop with multiple objects and we know how to set it up with different shapes, different sizes, and troubleshoot some issues. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you in figuring out how to get your objects to travel along paths. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. We couldn't do this without your all support. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.